What is going on everybody? It is Lukey Boy here and today we are doing the usual market update but also I'm going to talk about you know when is the right time to buy NFTs but more importantly when it's the right time to buy crypto to buy NFTs right because as you know there's a lot of volatility in the market right now lots of extremes happening and that's completely normal to be honest it actually is like it price is coming down to what it is now it is relatively fine pretty standard nothing to see here more more for me because I've seen this happen before many times many times you know I've seen it go from 18 grand to three grand uh Bitcoin you know uh, just looking at here, you know, I saw it do this uh, and it went down 83%, you know, just so we can see what it's done so far. You know, I don't like that it's only done 73. I want to see it come down here, somewhere around here, to be honest, 14. That would be a lot more healthy, actually. That is what I, I actually want, want to see that. The reason I want to see that is because you want to be, you don't want to be buying crypto for NFTs, let's say, even, even have a thought about that until the bottom's in. Now, everyone's saying that I've seen Oh, I think the bottom's in, the bottom's in, the bottom's in, all right? Uh, and people are always were always saying, oh, around 20, 20 grand will be the bottom. It did come down to pretty much 18. Um, but I don't think this is it, to be honest. When, when everyone's saying it's going to do something, it usually doesn't do that. It either does one or two things, which I mentioned before. It either doesn't come as low as that. So, it, you know, it comes down to like 25 and that's it. So everyone's saying it's going to come to 20 grand because it always gets to around the previous all-time high. And this one's from 11th of December 2017. Uh, and then it normally picks back up again. Even if it doesn't like instantly pick up, it would just curve around like this, this line you can kind of see. So it would just kind of do a U uh, or yeah, a U um, and then pop slowly, slowly grind on. Um, but I don't believe that for one second. Like ultimately it doesn't matter what I believe, right? But uh, when everyone's saying something, usually isn't a good thing. Uh, usually ignore whatever that thing is. And it will either be front run, meaning it never comes that low, or it goes lower. Uh, and we've already hit this, so therefore I think the only other option is lower. And because the other times, you know, this is this is this is a time when the the kind of overall market. This is actually in 2017, right? Now what I'll do is I'll just go on Nasdaq 2017, but somewhere around here, and look what the markets have done ever since, right? It's just gone up. This is the general market, right? I know it's gone down here. COVID hit here. And yes, you know, there was uh, some instances of COVID action on Bitcoin, XBT, uh, just here. Um, but yeah, like with that additional layer of issues with the economy and stuff, it, it creates, it means that this becomes even more of a riskier asset in theory, uh, even though people say it's the least risky. But ultimately, if you think about it, most people that are investing heavy amounts of money, they're, they're usually more conservative in terms of their like with proper businesses or they have, they're older in terms of the, um, you know, they've generated their wealth because they're usually older. And so therefore they're not seeing this through the eyes of like a 20 year old or 25 year old. They're seeing this through the eyes of like a, kind of like an eighties uh, or seventies person, if you kind of get what I mean. Just like with the, you know, like a government policies and stuff, they're always really, they, they, it takes ages for policies to come out related to issues now because they're so stuck in, well, or more, they're more stuck in the past than they are in the current because they've obviously, they're older people. Not to say that that's 100% true, it's clearly not, right? But, you know, usually things take longer for things to materialize, for people to shift their mindset on things because they're so kind of used to something else, right? So I just feel that this will come down. Uh, and so for me, I'm not actually looking to buy anything. But ultimately, you know, when you're already in the market, like with NFTs, with the crypto, it's coming down fine. But if it, if it stops here and goes back up, then great. And then, you know, we can see, you know, 100 grand Bitcoin in two years by the end of next year or something. So no, no issues. So I don't need to buy back in. But if it comes back down, and then obviously on Ethereum, that would then represent somewhere around this blue box. I actually did, I actually moved this blue box a little bit around here. It, it might not, it might even be something like around here. I don't, you know, it's not, it's not gonna be an exact science, right? It's just a, a zone. It's a zone more than anything, like a zone here, right? Um, Like anywhere here you bought is good. Doesn't really matter if it was at 88 or 200, you know, 270 or 300, doesn't really matter because it went up to four and a half grand. That's kind of what I'm mean. So it's, it's not, it's not an exact science. It's just a, a better zone to bump up, you know, to be buying in. Even anything around here, it's not terrible, but really I would, I would be just a bit more conservative adding those extra economical and issues like that, because it's, um, you know, interesting to obviously see. So what we want to know is, you know, is it worth buying NFTs, uh, anything like that? Because NFTs are just chilling out. You know, nothing's, I mean, it hasn't had a little bit of an uptick, downtick. It's kind, of, it's kind of just fluctuating around where it is now, right? It's not doing anything drastic. It's just kind of chilling off. You know, you can see that by the volume. The OpenSea's volume for the month is, is, is it's not, it's about a week left and it's pretty terrible, even if it ends up here. 
still way, 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 way terrible. Way terrible, really good English. Lots of selling going on still. So, you know, I wouldn't, you know, in, until you start seeing this and this flip around, or even par, um, you know, there's probably more downside. Things are gonna tick up, um, and then, but it's more like it. people are gonna take profits because people haven't been, been able to get profits recently, like they have been. It's more likely that people are gonna go, let's take profits now because we want to take profits. Now, some people might be like, well, I can't take profits because the, the price of ETH's gone down so much. Now, if I want to sell it for one ETH, it's worth only a grand in dollars. But half an ETH was worth 1,500, which I bought it for. So actually down, if I sell it for double, you know, double the ETH. In theory, yeah, but I wouldn't worry about that because really you, you want, if you're already in the ecosystem, I would just be looking to accumulate as much ETH as possible for the eventual increase uh, in price over time, over the next, you know, from here, you know, or you could you could do something like this. Not not that this is going to even work, right? But you can say this went up two hundred and forty one percent all all time high to all time high. But it took you two thousand eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, yeah, four years. So if you were going to do something similar, if you just accumulate in ETH for the next four years and it went up two hundred and forty percent, even if it went up one hundred and sixty percent, one hundred and forty, you're up twelve grand. You see what I'm kind of getting at? So that's the play if you're already within the space. You're just trying to accumulate and, and compound your ETH, get some decent blue chips potentially that are, uh, and you know, cheaper. Um, but also, you want to be aware of, you know, if the price of ETH does drop considerably, maybe there be a lot of NFTs that are actually relatively cheap to buy into, enter the market, as in put some money in, put in two thousand pounds. Let's say give you two thousand five hundred um, dollars. Let's say ETH gets to, I don't know, let's just say it went to two hundred fifty dollars. So you had, to, you know, you can get ten ETH for two thousand five hundred. Yeah. 10 ETH for $2,500, two grand, which is like you know, thinking back when the NFT market was booming, that sounds in, that sounds stupid. If someone goes, you know, give me two and a half grand or two grand, like give you 10 ETH. That sounded incredibly ridiculous when it, we, ETH was anywhere around here, right? And not only that, but you could come in here and you could go ahead and go, oh, you know, what projects did I love that I wanted to get into? Well, you know, you can get uh, an other side deed for 2.29. It's very cheap. That's two, you know, that's, that's uh, well, at the current price, it's like two thousand five hundred dollars, two thousand pounds. Um, yeah, and and this price has moved since it sort of got released. Well, it was a bit higher before the reveal, but you know, it hasn't really since reveal. And it's now like a discount, fifty percent or something. Yeah, you know, maybe you want to get a well, it's a bit too, too expensive on that. But let's have a look. What you could get, you could get anything that I know that I'm actually. You get me bit. You could get uh, just looking for sort of the general um, interesting. You know, you could. Not get a move, but you can get motherfuckers. You get Damien Hurst currency, decent, but overpriced right now. You can get cool cats. You can get a couple of sandboxes, well, more than a couple, but you know what I mean. Uh, sandbox doesn't really move a lot actually. So, um, but I, I think in the future it will be a pretty good one. Uh, I'd like to get in from that actually at some point. Um, you know, just kind of looking at. You can get a board eight kennel club. Not to say that you might want that, but you know you, you can get it. Just looking at the stuff that's kind of like a bit more in the scope of uh, blue chip territory more than anything. Um, you know, you get a V friends. Yeah, you know, like, like that goes. That's got to like twenty ETH or something before. Uh, maybe eighteen, sixteen ETH. So I've seen something decent. Like, I think I've only got oh, this twenty four hour. Uh, you know, you, you get a handful of NFT worlds that used to be worth twenty ETH, and it was worth at that point like a, I don't know what was it sixty eighty grand. You know, and now it's worth four thousand. Like you know, what I'm trying to say like there's 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 some crazy opportunity because really what what if it, if the price does drop more uh, and go into that blue box i think we're in the wrong one no what's that blue box on mox out let's just make sure that's right yeah around this so if you can if you can get if, if it does continue to drop and i feel it will um just because you know everyone's calling for the price of bitcoin to be at this price and bounce whenever the majority of people say something like that it usually doesn't do that right it, it either goes lower or it gets front run meaning it just doesn't even get that low and the fact that it's gone that low, when everyone's saying it's going to get to 20 grand, probably means it's going to go to 14. And it could even go down even more. You know, the reason is obviously, since we've been playing this whole kind of zone here, like from the previous ball to this ball, there hasn't been really any economical issues in the markets. It's just been a general crypto only related um, up and down, you know, cycle. But now there's more economical issues, it's adding another layer of issues to potentially uh, make an impact on the price. Yeah. You know, people are having issues potentially paying bills. They maybe had a couple of grand in Bitcoin or whatever. And now they're like, you know what? I might need that just to buy bread or like, it's going to be a thought for some people, right? And so you're adding a more uncertainty in the market, which could bring the price down even more. And also you could even have, because of that factor, you could have institutional investors 
knowing that that is an, an issue and forcing the price down to scare people out at a lower price. So if it comes down here, that's going to go, oh my God, like I can never imagine Bitcoin going up price. I, it, it's going to keep going down, keep going, you know, it's going to keep, uh, but what if it goes to eight grand? Oh my God, like I'm, I need to get it. And I'd rather, I'd rather have some money out than, not, than have nothing left. Just like the Lunar and stuff, we will have, you know, $200 million and it's worth like a grand now, literally. So, you know, and because of those things as well, it puts that kind of like emotional thought or something that's happened recently that could, you know, people, oh my, what if, what if Luna, something happens to like similar to Luna and I have money and then I can't even, you know, pay the mortgage or something. So, you know, you're adding that in where before, of course, you know, when, when this was all happening, pre the previous uh, cycle, you know, NASDAQ was just on a rip ultimately. You know, 2017, Bitcoin's previous all time high. This, it, yes, it's had COVID dips and a little dips here, but it's just gone on the rip, right? And so they're, now they're having this, you know, and who knows where the bottom will be on this. This could be it, to be honest. Put this line there. Uh, it could even come down, not even, it could come down as low as COVID or just kind of close. But there's greater issues at play, right? Than there is just the crypto space, you know, because crypto is influenced. And so, really, what I would love to be doing is getting in here. And if I can get 10 ETH, like, two and a half grand in dollars like that would be sick you know you, you know you don't even put five grand you got 20 ETH. and imagine buying some some of these for 20 ETH. uh or well, not all of you know not something for 20 ETH, but you know some of those blue chips that you always wanted knowing the potential not only is, is the price to enter decent but the value of to get in on these is now wet, like is at a discount as well so not only is the eth price lower like decently low compared to its all-time high like i say board it's got to 130 140 at one point but that was when ETH was at three grand so if, if you think of the opportunity that there could be at some point in the future over the next couple of years it's pretty insane to be honest and so it's almost like too good to pass up where you can get such a lot about a lot amount of eth that say you know if you get two and a half two two thousand pounds two and a half thousand dollars you can get 10 ETH. let's say that that event that eventuality and that uh, scenario does play out you spend 10 ETH on I don't know, even these, you just buy four of these or something, uh, or you buy one of these, you know, that's just making this up. Yeah, that's pretty much 10 ETH. So, you know, you buy one of these, these Clonexes, right? Let's just go to here. Let's go to here. The average price up here is about 20 ETH. Okay, 20 ETH. So let's say it gets back up to 20 ETH at some point, which is only 2X, not even that much, right? Um, well, let's say that that 20 ETH is now $3,000 a Bitcoin. Sorry, $3,000 uh, an Ethereum. So, you know, three grand times 20, you've got 60K. 60k from that just from a 2x and ethereum not even getting to its all-time high not even that close because four and a half grand was its all-time high or five grand actually maybe it was like near five yeah nearly five so you know all you want to do even if you were taking profits at 2400 in the middle in the middle of the range you know you don't have to be perfect right and you're able to make 40 grand from a like two grand investment and and the downside risk is two grand ultimately <laughs> the downside risk is two grand yeah you still have the eth but you know, if you're looking at cash terms, um, you'd lose two grand. And then once you've lost that, you can't really lose anymore. But if you're buying up, you know, buying in here at uh, 20 ETH and it's worth three grand a token, that's 60 grand, obviously you can lose 60 grand, right? Because at that point you could just put it into your bank. So you, you downside risk is 60 grand. So the opportunity there is that there's hardly any risk almost, uh, but it's huge upside. Because not only is you got the potential for the ETH price to pop up, but you got the potential for NFTs to have their boom cycle at some point in the future. Could even be six months down the line. It could be nothing for six months, right? But that's not even a long term. That's a long time. You know, it doesn't matter. Six months is nothing. Like a couple of years. Like, you know, we just show. I showed earlier. This is about four year cycle from here to here. Four years is nothing. You know, if you can if you can put in ten grand and make three hundred grand in four years, that sounds insane, doesn't it? Actually, insane, almost. And that, and that's not even doing a lot. That's maybe buying like three of. You're know, putting in ten grand, getting four of these, and literally just selling at two x when ethereum is kind of in the middle of the range so at some you know i say in some point in the future it just gets back up here and you can't see a date almost it's annoying but let's say it's like a year's time or a year and a half time two years time doesn't even have to go up to the all-time highs doesn't even have to go above the all-time highs you know if we're down here somewhere on this yellow line let's say that coming down we'll say we're here and obviously it does come lower which is where you want to be buying um even if it popped up here a little rally you know even if uh it pops up here that's still, that's still a crazy game. That's like 352%, right? So if you had, let's say the, and also at that point, you'd probably have a bit of an NFT rally because people have a bit more um, confidence because the market's actually going up rather than down. Where the down market's happening, people are losing faith in all assets. So people are waiting for this to balance out like this, to, to, to find that people are waiting to, for it to find its bottom before people do anything. 
put in more money and you know do anything like that because they just they just they have no idea what how low this can go uh in the future so therefore there's just no point in them you know putting money in because a lot of people if you think about it take profits out and then they can put it back in take it out put it back in you know, because, because they know it's volatile like this they know the asset is volatile and so they are and they because they understand that they are taking profits along the way and converting to say usdt or putting it into that bank whatever they're doing and right now it's like do i buy ethereum at 1077 but by next week it could be 500 so i could get double my ethereum next week just by waiting and that's kind of the thought process a lot of people are having right so you know and i i just don't feel this is the bottom like if it is great like you know all gravy baby and all that <laughs> whatever the hell i'm saying but i just don't I, everyone's calling this to be the previous you know to be the low and i and really again it's not even had that much of a bounce what do i mean by that is that you know if it's really like because this has actually gone lower than what people have said on Bitcoin. It went to like $17,790. People are saying it was going to be up in here, but it can work. You can't, people understand it can do that, right? And they're calling this, but if you look how the bounce, it's pretty anemic. It's pretty terrible. Like this bounce is just, there's like not much going on here. The increase, right? You know, what you want to see is something like this. It doesn't have to always play out of that, but see this absolute down destruction? It actually went all the way down to, so in, one day it went from 8,000 to four, and then the following day it actually continues to three, six, but then it ended closing at like 5,000, and then it obviously just bounced up over the next week and a half, two weeks. That's kind of what you want to see. You want to see some like responsive action rather than this, where it just looks like it's just having a bit of a temporarily relief, temporarily, temporarily relief before going down, which obviously is going to impact, you know, more. And again, like just, can't remember if I did it on this video or the other video, but this cycle here, Bitcoin from its all-time high, considering there was no economical issues at all, it was just the general market, came down 85%. Well, if you want to see where 85% actually falls, it's somewhere around here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's actually around $11,000 and it's at 20. So, you know, let's say it's a bit more of a stronger asset these days because obviously as time goes on, it should be potentially be stronger. Even if it's taking 78%, it's 14 grand. Same with Ethereum. I like to see Ethereum drop more. And, and this, again, it's never going to be the same every time. This drops like 93%. Here, 93% is $311. And it could even be more extreme, like 95, 96, 97%, because there's other factors in the world that are affecting markets rather than its isolated market conditions that was pretty much happening here. Like there was no other external factors really impacting this. Yeah, the odd, you know, legislation or blah 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 but nothing global that is impacting markets totally like total totalitarianism probably the wrong way in its entirety every market's getting basically hit right so that's why i'm waiting and if you can get down in here so i'm planning like right if it does do this you know if it gets to here and you know xyz so i'm, I'm basically going to be putting you know a bit of my money away every month in anticipation just basically build up a pot every month in anticipation that the price gets down if it doesn't then i can either just keep it keep the money in my bank or whatever or i can put it into some i don't know whatever stocks and shares ice if i want or i don't know whatever i want to do really ultimately but i want to be in i want to be prepared in you know the, the ultimate play would be this grinds out for a long time not doing anything very similar to this so it, yeah it's going up and down but it kind of doesn't do a lot and it kind of just plays up and down in this in this low territory so it means that over, you're able to accumulate more Ethereum each month, for example, or however you want to play it. There's no, there's no direct, you could just put it in all at once at a, a good price, like here. And be like, yeah, if it goes down lower, that's fine. I can potentially, if it goes down to $50, like how many could, you know, $50, you could just be buying one a week, potentially. So one of, you know, it's, it's not enough for it to really um, impact your like bank account. You kind of get what I mean? Oh, well, it might be for some, but you know, realistically, you could probably find fifty dollars or hundred dollars a month to buy one or two if, if it got that low. But here's still a far better price to be buying in than anywhere up here. Yeah, because you know clearly, right? It's already down. You know, ninety three percent. It's clearly better to be better to be buying down here. And everyone, you know, the, the issue that happens with every market is that people say, "Oh, I'm gonna, I can't wait till it goes down. I'm gonna buy loads of ETH or Bitcoin." The problem is everyone always says it's going to go down lower. So even when Ethereum and Bitcoin were down here, $85, people are like, it's going to go lower. So they go to 40. Because it's keep, because they just see down, down, down. They're like, well, why can't it go down another 30%? Because 
which is just understandable. You don't know where the bottom is. But again, it's more about playing the ranges. You know, you want to buy down here, not up here. And then you just hold. Yeah, it might not be the bottom. You might buy up. You might buy here, seven hundred and fifty dollars. But over the, you know, for example, if you just go back in history, I can show you here. You might buy here, thinking, you know, it's going up, and you're like, oh yeah, let's buy up here. Nowhere near the top, but nowhere, near, you know, not at the bottom. It comes back down to the bottom, and you might be like, oh my god, I can't believe that. And you don't buy any here. Comes back up here, and eventually it does this. Yeah. So you're looking at the, the macro picture rather than any isolated individual section, you know, just to help you. So then you obviously would then use, you know, accumulate these for a while, or you would then, uh, you would buy uh, NFTs with them. But obviously if you're only putting in say one or two ETH a month, that $200, you know, you've got to decide like, what can I buy with that two ETH? Is, it, is there anything that's worth me investing in? Or do I save that and buy something that I want that say for five ETH? So you could, you could wait, but obviously the longer you wait, you never know if the prices are going to be changing with NFTs because their NFTs, right? They're going to change in price. So it's so just something to be aware of. Um, either you just do it in like three month batches. So you put enough in for three months and you don't put in any for two. So you've got enough to make some purchases, knowing that the market's quite well priced in NFTs or however you kind of really want to play it. You know, if you're just looking at the, uh, you know, general rankings and, and NFTs, not a lot is going on. You know, you, this is fluctuating between like 75 and 84. And it's still moving, right? But, you know, in, in terms of ETH, but really you don't want to be getting out of the market right now. Don't sell any, any, any NFTs. Don't sell ETH. Don't do anything because we've already had a, you know, uh, XYZ crash, like uh, whatever the crash is, 8%. So now's the last time you want to be able to take it out. Basically do it opposite of everyone else. If everyone else is panicking, you, that's a good sign to be buying or be buying or, or be uh, attentive to potential buying um when everyone else is super bullish i'll be going 100 grand doing this probably take money out and it's very hard at the time to do that but you know everyone's saying oh i'm gonna hold for life on that say board eight but if you sold 140 ETH at three grand you took out some of that profit and say you took 100 grand out you left the rest in ETH. you can now buy back in a whole board eight for like 84 grand and you still get you still got the rest like 16 grand on the side and you still have all the other you know money in all xyz nfts that you have so i i, I don't like that hollow for life because you could basically buy and sell on the highs and over time the market's always going to act like this it's always going to have ups and downs so you can just buy back in and you can just cycle through in and out in and out over over years in and out, in and, out, in and, out. and at some point you might go right you know i've got plenty of money now and i've made it uh, and therefore i'm going to keep a board ape forever because you but it doesn't mean that you haven't got another five board apes that you're doing that with over the long term because at some point we're going to have a bull market and then we're going to have another bear market exactly like this in you know 2028 you're going to see whatever you're going to see it doesn't you know i don't know how long the cycles will last that's an unknown factor but over the long term you'll have the ups and the downs and that's more what you need to be aware of and of course that same thing happens with the nft market you know selling even if you sold nft worlds at 10 eth which is half of what it got to they're now like three 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 point nine or at one point that was 2.8 you see and so you could buy three or four with that you could sell it and now you've got four and you might be like well i could have sold yeah you could have but you don't need to be perfect ultimately you just gotta you gotta let the patience and time and market cycles play out which obviously is requires patience and, and you know control over your emotions which is usually what a lot of people don't have so and what i was saying just to sum up this video is this is actually what you need you need to have this up that you need to experience the both both sides of the coin because you need an extreme down market to give you that resilience and understanding that fuck okay now i know that this happens and i can feel it it's you know it's, maybe i'm in panic maybe i'm whatever now i know what to do in the next event i'm not going to make that same mistake of holding just that little extra long for that extra bit of profit or that you know because of xyz or hodling for life because i understand the cycles and how they work and how not only that, but the ETH value has its volatility. So you can also add that into the equation in terms of buying ETH cheaper to get cheaper NFT. You know, for example, now, if I go and sell an NFT that I bought, let's say I bought it for one ETH for three grand. If I sell that for one ETH, really, I've got three grand tied up in there because I bought it for three years, even though it's now worth one. So, but then I could buy an, buy an ETH now for one grand. So like, you've got to also think, you know, it's like, oh God, it's like, you've got to kind of understand that that's that dynamic in terms of the volatility that it can play, yeah, that, that it can, um, how it can impact things and decision making and the future of how you're going to be strategically trading and buying and selling NFTs or just the crypto itself. You know, it doesn't mean you can't hold crypto as well. Buy down here, the ETH, and hold some. Because you, you know, yes, you could put into NFTs, but you're also happy to just hold, you know, five ETH on the side that you bought for, you know, a grand or something. And you're, that's more of your longer term, just buy and sell ETH when it's decent profits. And the NFTs is also another layer. You, you know, you're adding layers of different aspects to it 
So I'm going to leave the video there. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm not sure how long it's even last for, but you know, it's just a very interesting view for thought for the future uh, in terms of scenario planning um, and what to do. Again, not financial advice, not financial advisor. Uh, everyone should decide themselves. You know, this could be the bottom. This could not be. Um, I would like to see it lower. It doesn't mean it will go lower. In my opinion, it it's probably more likely to go lower than not due to the whole economical issues that are going to be compounding this and making it a worse situation. Everything's going to have a more extreme or worse situation, I feel. So if it never gets this low, fair enough, I might miss out. Maybe I can get a little bit around the five, six hundred dollars and I can sort of get some here, some here, some here. Doesn't have to be perfect, right? There's a zone, just like when I used to talk about buying zones on NFTs. Um, but looking for the long run and it could take another year, it could take two years until Ethereum is back up, uh, you know, even at two grand, who knows? We don't, it could do, it could come down real, really sharp and bounce back up to 1,600. I've seen stuff like that, like, um, you know, pretty much like this, you know, it went from $282 Ethereum down to 80 uh, and then back up to like 250 within like three months. So not even that long. Could do something like that. So it could just be a bigger version of that down here and back up to 1,300. Could do that. No, no one knows, but it's not about predicting the future. It's about if certain things happen, what you're going to do. That's pretty much what you got. That's pretty much it. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.